Hey guys, this is uh, Josh Eight Loop, and here's another view of my crystal radio that I made a, uh, a video of uh, last night, actually, of tuning through the band. Um, thought I'd uh, just give you a different view of the crystal set and explain it just a little bit. Uh, it's actually a double-tuned um, crystal radio, uh, which means it doesn't use any batteries to uh, detect and to demodulate the uh, uh, audio frequencies that are overriding the uh, RF coming from the AM radio station. This particular uh, radio picks up stations between 560 kilohertz um, on up to uh, I think it's like 1710 or uh, somewhere in there. Um, so basically what we have it's double tuned uh, inductively coupled and on the left hand side of the crystal set you have my um, antenna ground tank and on the right hand side here you have the detector uh, portion and there's actually no physical electrical connection between the two as you can see so uh, you hook your antenna up here your ground and that energy gets fed into this tank and now a tank circuit is con uh, composed of a variable capacitor in this case um, and a, an inductor. And so the parallel combination of those two allows you to turn the variable capacitor and tune uh, the frequency that this, uh, this pair resonates at. And so once you get it uh, resonating to a certain frequency and you have uh, fed the ground and antenna into it, it actually radiates uh, an electromagnetic field that actually extends and couples the two of those. Now, like I mentioned, this is inductively coupled, and one way you can change the amount of energy that's coupled between the two is by physically moving those closer or farther, farther apart. And I've achieved that um, with some dial cord and four, um, four little wheels here and they go around the perimeter of the board so that when you turn the knob it allows you to uh, you know make that traverse back and forth and that changes the amount of coupling between the antenna ground tank and the detector circuit so um, let's see that pretty much takes care of that this uh, this this antenna ground uh, tank circuit actually is a ferrite core coil that uses 33046 lits. As it stands right now, the Q of that coil is probably between 5 and 800. And with some tweaks and some repositioning of the ferrite, and um, you know, just taking care of a few little housekeeping issues with it, the Q of that coil can actually uh, go up quite a bit, probably to uh, a thousand or a little higher in certain portions of the band. So, um, also I have some uh, some reduction drives, dual reduction drives on this that allows you to uh, turn the front knob um, quite a few more times than the actual variable capacitor moves. And that really helps when you have a crowded band and you really want to dig out that 10 kilohertz uh, selectivity from your crystal set. Um, well, let's move on to the detector portion. Uh, as you can see on the right hand side, like I mentioned, this is the detector portion. It consists of a tank circuit, which is again your coil and variable capacitor pair. Those are in parallel to each other. And um, I've got an amp meter here, a uh, 20 microamp meter if you can see um, on that. And of course a switch that turns it on and off. Now I chose to um, include a switch that will change the needle deflection. For some reason, if it changes deflection on me, um, which I notice happens when I use uh, this particular type of detector, um, and you can simply just switch that. And so that makes for adjustments on the fly real easy. I also had to include a ferrite bead in the wiring as well because uh, when I lived in Springfield, Missouri, we had a local radio station for the um, a local college, and the uh, the backdoor FM spurious reception was just uh, incredible, and it would actually impose audio into my radio 
and when you're listening to very faint DX signals that can be a, a, an issue if you have audio that's not what you're actually intending to listen to and so um, you know that ferrite bead which I scavenged from a, a cord maybe like a, a junk cord that was uh, used for communications on a computer I scavenged that core and then um, of course wrapped some wire a few times into it and that actually cut down on some of the FM uh, reception, unwanted reception that I was getting. Well again, uh, same reduction drives as you can see. It takes about two and a half to three turns of this uh, to get this to turn once. And this um, connects directly obviously to here and that's insulated so hand capacitance affects detuning on the capacitor are very minimal because I have dual insulators on that and I also have uh, dual reduction drives so as you can see um, if you can look at the capacitor on the right and my hand on the left when I tune turn this quite a few times it uh, takes a lot to get that uh, capacitor on the right to turn and like I mentioned earlier that's exactly what you want when you really want to dig out some selectivity um, there comes a point in crystal radios when you can raise a Q um, you know, you really need to uh, follow that up by mechanically slowing down the tuning. Otherwise, you will just simply pass over stations very quickly. And, uh, you know, so that that is definitely a must when you start to get towards the higher end, um, you know, crystal radio construction. Uh, this is not your uh, grandfather's crystal radio. This is, uh, you know, uses uh, some components from uh, back in the day, but it has some new modern twists. In fact, while we're speaking of twists, we'll uh, mention that uh, this actually uses the advanced linear devices uh, zero bias FET as the detector. And um, this is, of course, my detector tank coil. Here's the main tank uh, coil section, and then I have a little small takeoff coil right here and that is only probably about 10 to 15 percent turns ratio of what the main tank is and what that allows us to do it allows us to take the voltage seen by the top of the tank right here and it goes into the gate of the FET and that allows the FET to switch on and off depending on um, the, uh, the audio so that takes your RF and allows you to make it um, you know, into audio that you can you can hear and makes it intelligible, and um, and of course the uh, audio is actually taken off of the small coil. So I mean, this is essentially a transformer. So you can allow this to achieve a high voltage. This achieves a much lower impedance, lower voltage, and this is what I'm taking my energy for the headphones out of. So it allows this tank to achieve a much higher Q, a much higher selectivity, a much higher voltage, which drives the FET effectively and cleanly on and off. But when I go to take out some energy for my headphones, it's a very small portion of the total energy collected in the system. So it allows you to effectively match your headphones uh, very well to this low percentage of the uh, tank coil and that preserves Q and selectivity and also sensitivity and so that is basically it in a nutshell um, again I have my antenna tank uh, side, antenna ground tank side and uh, dual reduction drives here's some remnants of a previous project uh, as you guys know these crystal radios are very experimental and as such you generally tend to produce different coils or you might uh, add a capacitor here or there or change uh, change some wiring um, schemes that you 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 know you have in fact this coil is a test coil uh, that I put together that's uh, become somewhat permanent um, you know and as you can see it's just simply zip tied on there uh, you know this one's not secured on the end it's free to free to move and so it's not firmly secured but uh, you know it's one of those things with crystal radios uh, you know with uh, instrumentation you can build new coils test the queue um, install it on the the radio and you can you know take a spin through the dial and see what you think 
as far as sensitivity and selectivity. So it's an ever, um, you know, ever-changing uh, format. But this open format allows me to do quite a bit um, with it. So that's a, that's a good thing. Anyway, I thought I'd show you guys a little bit about this crystal radio, and uh, hopefully uh, you all enjoy what you see, and hopefully it. Uh, spurs you on to uh, possibly produce your own crystal radios and uh, uh, listen to the dial and, and see what kind of uh, DX reception you might be able to achieve with yours as well. So, good luck!